We are just doing a review. Yay. Welcome, e learners. It was less than 1.9, right? It was less than 1.9, that is correct. That is correct. All right, today we're going to do a uh, chapter test review. You'll see how it goes. Uh, I will leave a link uh, at the bottom of the uh, Google form to the chapter review. You'll see it. I also provide the answers to all the questions. Remember on your chapter test, which is the next class, uh, you can have a resource card, uh, no calculators, and you have 50, five, zero minutes to get the test done. Do what? If you want to do it real quick, I'd appreciate it. Okay, Julie, what's up? Uh, when we're done with this, the answer is yes. You got your homework done, aren't you? All right, let's go with this. Uh, it was two through thirty evens. Two through thirty evens. All right, let's cut the noise down to zero, please. So this was opposites and absolute value. And yes, I, I still see kids. Uh, that will screw up absolute value. They will think incorrectly that absolute value swaps the signs. That's what opposites do. Absolute value is always positive, with that one exception if there's a subtraction sign on the outside. All right, any questions? No. All right, here we go. Uh, two to 30 units. All right, number two is negative six. Number four is zero. Number six is eight. Number eight is two. Number 10 is 15. I do want you to notice the difference between six and eight. And what's the first one? 10. 10 is the, the, or, uh, 10 is the first one where we have absolute value symbols. See how, how they look similar to brackets. They are not brackets, they are absolute value. All right, number 12 is 11. 14 is 1, 16 is 5.6, 18 is a half, 20 is 0. All right. I rarely have uh, ninth and 10th graders that can't do inequalities, but they can't tell me the name of the symbol. So 22 is math game symbol this, right? This is the less than symbol. So as you go from left to right, you get to the point, not the opening. We call that less than symbol. Uh, 24 is the greater than symbol. You come to the left to right, you come to the opening first. Uh, 26 is equals. All right. Now they have you write uh, with uh, an or, uh, uh, expression with uh, absolute value. So uh, number 28, there's two ways of writing it. Four is less than the absolute value of negative 10. Or you could say negative 10 is greater than the, I'm sorry, the absolute value of negative 10 is greater than four. Either way would be fine. Uh, as it's written, I would have wrote four less than absolute value negative 10. And then number 30 is negative eight is less than negative four. Yes? Yep. All right. Make sure your name's on them. Rowan's coming around to grab that for you. I should say Alvin one somewhere. Okay, so old kids know how, how it goes with a test. New kids, here's how it goes. The day before the test, we do a practice test. Just be careful you read this. I mean, there's going to be a slide. I'll go to it. Um, there is the... Um, the procedures and the notes. So it's going to be on page 42. Sometimes I will give you a physical practice test. Other times we do it from the book. Today's one of those times we do it from the book. Okay. So you're going to be doing on page 42 the chapter test. You're going to do it 1 through 20 all. My claim is that the real test will be very similar to this. Okay. So some people like Julia question us, can I literally just write down the question? You absolutely can. 
Pick the ones that you know, oh, I'm going to miss that one, or that's the one that I need help on. That's the one that should go on your resource card. There are other kids out there, um, you know, um, Landon, I'm trying to remember, did he have a resource card on most tests? And we had the geometry stuff, I remember him having one. But there's other times where I don't remember him having a resource card. And this isn't, uh, let me show you I can pass the test without a resource card. This is entirely up to you to decide. Some kids, every single test would have a resource card. And sometimes they would pick and choose, right? If it helps you use it. I also said you can have a multiplication table. If you so need, you just can't use a calculation. By the time you get to ninth grade, I don't have too many kids that use a multiplication table, but a couple still do. All right, so I'm gonna give you, um, uh, in class, we're gonna work. So uh, Riley, I want you like right here uh, for today. You can move back there for the next class. You're going to work by yourself quietly. This isn't a group work. This isn't, hey, what did you get? Or how do you do this? This is a practice test, meaning like you're going to use it like I'm taking a real test. So you get a feel for, could I do 20 questions in the remaining 40 minutes we have in class? If you can, then you know you can pass it for tomorrow. Um, so you work by yourself. If you run into problems, certainly you call me over. So I will be talking. You might be talking to me. But you're not messing around with the people around you. It needs to be a quiet room. Right? Not necessarily so we can concentrate, although that is a good reason, but so that you can assure yourself that you can do the work. This is your last chance before we take the test to know whether you got to do a bunch of study tonight or you're ready for it. Uh, absolutely ask for help, but notice what you're getting wrong, and that's what you should study tonight. So what I do when I take practice tests, if I get something wrong, I circle that one. And then tonight, you know, that's what I'm gonna, when I'm alone and I got my resource card, I might put that one on the resource card to remind myself, hey, that absolute value thing. Whatever's on the inside is how far it's away from zero, whatever it, whatever it takes. I also give you all the answers, right, to every single question, right? They're on the back of the sheet that I'm about to hand out. So as you're doing the problems, you're also flipping this over. Yep, I got number one right. Yep, I got number two right. Or wow, I got that one way wrong, right? Of all the tests, this will be the easiest one. Chapter one is always easy. That's not to say that for you, it might be hard. It might be hard for you, but I'm just saying, complexity-wise, chapter one is the easiest one we'll take of the year. Uh, algebra one is a challenging course. Uh, absolutely by chapter three, very challenging. Chapter two is kind of like somewhere between very easy and, and more challenging. So use your time wisely and get the work done. And I'm not joking around, you guys sit up here. So, this will not go in the grade book because I'm giving you the answers. So, occasionally, and I, we got good kids to go this school. Um, occasionally, I have a student like, he just said it's not going in the grade book. Why on earth should I even do this? If that's your attitude, you're at the wrong school. Right? No, I won't put this in the grade book, and I will not collect it either. But what I do give you is the fact that this will resemble the test. All right, everybody have one? Yep. So we're on page 42 of your book. Uh, for me, like if I check my answer on every one, then I get to see what the next one is immediately. You know, it kind of influences me. Like, oh, I already know the answer is blah, blah, blah. So it kind of messes me up trying to do the problem. So I tend to like maybe do two or three and then I check my answers. But don't do the whole darn thing and then turn it over like, wow, I got 10 of them wrong, that sort of thing. Um, try to go a long way. Now, there's gonna be some of you, uh, um, Ryland's a pretty quick, quick worker. He's gonna be done in about 15, 20 minutes. So in the remainder of the time, quietly, at the place you're sitting, go ahead and make your resource card. If you got all that done and you're like, I am crazy confident I'm making an A tomorrow then certainly you can read a book or study something from another class period. But you also should be, uh, if you need to, ask me questions. And, and I'm not going to say it's going to be perfect quiet because there are going to be some kids that ask questions. So if you have a question, now is the time to ask it. We also have student advisement as well, too. Um, so if you want to say, what's going to be on the test? Or are you going to have a bunch of ones like this on the test? That's the one I'm messing up all the time. I mean, I still have time to like give you a, a worksheet of some sort if you want extra practice on something. I would not like really get all spun up 
Anna's all spun up because she wants to get a perfect paper, right? But I would not get too spun up on the work problem. I mean, it's exactly what we just did on the board, right? And if that's your one thing that you can't master, you could still get a B on the test without mastery of that one. But I'm going to say I think you should be pretty confident of that one question. Any questions? All right. Get to work. All right, e-learners, I'm going to stop it right there. Uh, you will get your test uh, tomorrow's class. The one link that I send will be the test. It will be on a, a Google form. You're going to have 50, five, zero minutes to take the test. Uh, no calculators. Uh, you can't uh, go online, check anything. Obviously, it's independent work, uh, but you can't have a resource card. And if you have any questions, send me an email. If not, I will see you tomorrow. Or no, I won't see you tomorrow because you're taking the test. So I'll see you in two class periods.